In this video, we're going to continue our journey, diving a bit deeper into math and take a look at how to calculate angles and have a 2D object rotate to face a target. We'll also be covering how to have a 2D object point towards your mouse. Coming up. Hey guys, I'm John with GameDevHQ, and every week we bring you amazing content focused on all things Unity. If you're new, consider subscribing, and special thanks to all of our awesome Plus and Pro members who make this weekly content possible. The objective for today is pretty straightforward. I have this arrow, and I'd like to have it point towards our enemy, which is the red cube. Now, to properly understand how to calculate the angles, we need to know about a few trigonomic functions. If you've ever taken a trigonometry class, you may be familiar with sine, cosine, and tangent. These are how we can calculate different angles and sides of a triangle. Now, without boring you with a complete math lesson, I'm going to make this as simple to follow as possible. We need to understand what the different sides of a triangle mean relative to the angle we're trying to calculate. What information do we know about the current triangle? I know the x value is at 4, 0, or just 4, and I know the y value is at 0, 5, or just 5. Knowing this information, we can calculate the direction, which will give us the final side of the triangle, C, which we covered in the previous video, and I'll provide a link in the description. Now what we can figure out is which angle do I want to calculate. I want to calculate the angle right here. So which trig formula do we need to use? Sine, cosine, or tangent? First, let's take a look at what each of these mean. There's an acronym that's super handy. You may have heard of it, SOCATOA. SO stands for sine, and the function is opposite over hypotenuse. CA stands for cosine, and the function is adjacent over hypotenuse. And finally, we have tangent, and the function is opposite over adjacent. Let's look at the angle we want to calculate. To calculate this angle, we need to use one of the above formulas. We want tangent, because tangent of theta, which stands for that angle, is opposite over adjacent, or commonly referred to as y over x. By doing this operation, we'll receive a scalar value, which is just a number. But this number can be turned into an angle of degrees by doing what's known as the inverse of the method. By taking the scalar value and performing the inverse tangent of this value, it will be an angle in degrees. So for our example, we can calculate y over x, which is 5 divided by 4, and that equals 1.25. We can then take the inverse tangent of this, and we get 51.34 degrees. That's the angle between our arrow and the enemy. Now, we just need to rotate by that. Let's create this in Unity. So in the scene here, I have an arrow and I have our enemy. The arrow has a calculate aim script attached. And if I open this in Visual Studio, we're not doing anything. So let's take a look here at the pseudocode logic for what we need to do in order to actually calculate the angle and rotate towards our enemy. The first thing we need is I need a reference to who I'm supposed to aim at, because in order for us to calculate the angle, I first need to know the direction to face. So here we need to calculate direction, and we'll go ahead and put this in update. But before I can calculate the direction, I need to know who is my target. So I need a variable reference to our enemy. So here we'll say reference to the enemy. And then once we calculate the direction, we need to then calculate the angle using the tangent method. Specifically, I want to use the inverse tangent. So we'll perform an operation of y over x, and then I want to take that scalar value and pass it into the inverse tangent method to get the angle. Now, Unity provides us with a function called mathf.atan2, and that actually handles that entire operation for us. So here, we calculate the angle using the tangent method, or specifically using the inverse tangent method. And then from here, I'm going to show you two different ways that we can actually rotate this object. The first one is to define the rotation. So we define the rotation along a specific axis. 
using the angle. And then we can do what's called a slurp. So that's basically slurping from our current rotation to the new specified rotation, which is what we define here. And then the other way I'm going to show you is, or we're going to do it where we basically manipulate the Euler angles directly. So we take our current Euler angles, and we just add our new angle to it. OK, so here is how this works. First step is we need a reference to the enemy so that we can calculate direction. So here I'm going to say private transform, and we'll create a reference variable to our enemy. And if I want to be able to assign this in the inspector, we'll create a serialized field attribute. Let's save this, hop back into Unity. And as soon as it compiles, you'll see here on the arrow, I can now drag in my enemy. So we now have a reference to the enemy. And then let's hop back into our script here. And I need to calculate the direction. So now if you remember, the formula for direction is direction equals the destination minus source. All right, and in the description is a link to the video on calculating direction. So here, we're basically going to create a vector 3 of type direction. So vector 3 direction equals the destination. So what is the destination? The destination is who we want to point at, which is our enemy. So enemy.position minus the source. The source is us. I need a direction between the enemy and us. So transform.position. The next thing we need to do here is we need to calculate the angle. So we know that our angle is going to be in degrees, so it's a float value. So here I'll say float angle. And that angle is going to equal the inverse tangent method. So the way we do this is we can actually use a method called mathf.atan2. Atan2 is going to prevent negative numbers and always make it positive so that if it were to go um, below our, like for example, if the enemy was below us, it would be able to calculate this. If we use just the ATAN method, um, then the there's, it can't support negative values. So ATAN2 will basically make it absolute values. So here we have angle equals mathf.atan2. When I open a parenthesis, it's going to say pass in the y and the x. Well, the y is going to be our direction.y. And then the x is going to be the direction dot x. And it's going to handle all of that mathematical stuff we talked about earlier. And it's going to return that scalar value. If we actually look at this, it's not going to actually return the scalar value. It's going to do a little bit more for us. It's actually going to return the angle in what's called radians. So without getting too complex into radians, radians is basically how we calculate stuff on what's called a unit circle. And what we want to do is convert radians to degrees. So the way we do that is there's a unity method here that will help us out called mathf.radians to degrees. And that will actually give us the angle. So what I can do here is I want to just, before we even continue on, let's just calculate what that angle is, as well as draw this direction. So here we have our vector three direction. And I'm going to say debug.drawRay. And let's pass in our transform starting position. And I want to draw a ray towards the direction. And we'll color it green. The next thing I want to do is I want to print out this value. I want to know what this angle is. And let's see if this angle is accurate. So debug.log angle. And then we're going to append the angle. We'll save this, hop back into Unity. Let's run the application. And you'll see here that in the scene view, we have a line being drawn between the arrow and our enemy. So that's our direction variable. And you can see here we have an invisible triangle. And then if we look here in the console, it printed out 128.6598. Now, we know that the angle between theta here is like 51 point something, right? So what is this number? It should be 51.34. So what is the number that we're actually getting here? And what's happening here is we are on, basically there's a zero here and a 180 here, and it's, go, it's telling us 128. So what it's saying here is that the angle between this green line and zero, this is 128 degrees. So we need to rotate 128 degrees to get to this line. And if we were to open up a calculator here, you can see here that if I take 180 degrees 
and we subtract 128.6598, we're left with 51.34 degrees, which is the angle between theta. That's this guy here. So what do we do with this angle 128? Well, that's what we need to rotate by. And we'll get to another part of this that's exclusive to unity. So check this out. How do we make use of this angle now? So it's 128 degrees that we need to rotate this object by. So the way we do that is we need to define a rotation along a specific axis. We do that using quaternions. Quaternions is how uh, rotations are handled in unity. So here I'm going to say rotation, and let's call this angle axis equal to quaternion dot angle axis. And you'll see here that basically we can pass in the angle and the axis we want to rotate along this angle. So it creates a rotation which rotates angle degrees around a specific axis. So I'm going to pass in our angle that we calculated. And then which axis do we want to rotate around? I need to rotate along what? How do I, how do I change this sprite to face our enemy? Well, we're rotating along, let's see. We're rotating along the z-axis. The z-axis is what we want to rotate. So we need to say, hey, you're going to rotate you know, 128 degrees along the z-axis. So to do that, we pass in here vector3.forward, which is our z-axis. Now that we have that angle axis specified, we can now slurp from our current rotation to the new rotation. To do that, we have to access our current rotation, which is transform.rotation. And then we assign it to a quaternion dot slurp method. And when I open a parenthesis here, it's passing in two quaternions, and then I can specify a speed. So here, we're basically going to say specifically inter uh, spherically interpolates between A and B by T. So quaternion A is going to be transform dot rotation, and quaternion B is going to be angle axis. And then here we can pass in like time dot delta time multiplied by, let's say, 50. We'll save this. And if we test it out, we should see here that we will rotate, but we won't rotate correctly. And this comes down to how the unit circle is calculated versus how unity works. So check this out. We did rotate, but we didn't rotate correctly here. What happened? Well, you'll see here that we actually rotated 128 degrees. And if I were to move this enemy, we see here that, hey, it's rotating with my enemy. But what's happening here? If I move it straight up, what's wrong? You'll see here and notice that it's offset by what? 90 degrees. And the reason for that is because when you're creating a unit circle in mathematics, um, you have 0 here, 90 degrees here, and then you have 180 here. In unity, however, though, it goes clockwise. So it goes counterclockwise in the unit circle, but it goes clockwise in unity. So in order to fix this, we need to offset it by 90 degrees. So to do that, we open up our code, and we simply just say mathf.rad to degrees minus 90. It's always going to be minus 90 in unity. And if we run this again, you'll now see that we have a perfect calculated angle. And there we go. And if I move this, we are moving with no problems. It's going to follow this 2D object no matter what. So let's take a look at another way we could have done this. I'm going to open up here the code, and let's comment out this quaternion angle axis stuff. Sometimes working with quaternions can be a little complicated. An easier solution here is I calculated my angle. I can just update the Euler angle along the z-axis. To do that, I can simply say transform.eulerangles. And you'll see here that it says the rotation as Euler angles in degrees. And what I can do here is I can specify the axis I want to rotate along, which is vector3.forward, and just multiply that by the angle. And by doing this, if we hop back into Unity here, let it compile, you'll see here that we're going to get the exact same functionality. And instead of specifying a speed for it to rotate, it's just going to map to the rotation. And you'll see here that it works the exact same. And it's very quick. And there we go. So that is how we have an object face another object in 2D. Now, how would we convert this to, say, a mouse input? What if I wanted to look at my mouse and not the enemy? Well, the way we do that is very similar. So here, we have our vector3 direction. Let's recalculate what the direction is. So here, we're going to say vector3 direction. 
And we now need to calculate the target, which is our mouse. The way we do that is we have to say camera.main, and then there is a there is a viewport to world space or screen point, I believe. We need to basically cast a ray from our mouse position. And you'll see here that there is a screen to world point. So I want to take my mouse position to the physical world. And that's what we need to do. We need to say camera.main.screen to world point, and I need to pass in a vector three position. So I can't just say input.mouse position, which is a vector three. It's a my current x and y for the mouse and then zero for z. This won't work because in order for this to work properly, I need to be in the physical world. My Z needs to be where my enemy and my arrow are, which is zero. If we look at the main camera, it's set to negative 10. So if I do input.mouse position, it's gonna assume that, hey, you wanna face towards negative 10. In 2D, there is no depth, so it's not gonna work. So what I need to do here is I need to say a new vector three. We'll pass in a new vector three. I'm gonna say the input.mouse position.x for the X axis. For y, it's going to be input.mouseposition.y. And then for z, we need to know, hey, how far is the camera from the game? It's negative 10, so it's going to be the inverse of that, so 10. And now we actually have our mouse position in, in physical space. So once we have that, we can then say direction equals the camera.main.screen to world point. And then I'm going to subtract that from our transform dot position. That's our source. So here we can save this. If we hop back into Unity now, this arrow is gonna now follow my mouse. So really, really easy to get the hang of. You'll see here, it's following my mouse. All right, I hope you guys enjoyed this. I'll see you in the next one.